Now, let's go back before I ask you this question. You, um, you was talking about this preacher when you talked about Easter. What was that concept again? The concept of Easter when you. No, he when was. You, he made the statement. Uh, uh, with not not in the, and, and Marie's final rites, but before that, mm -hmm. he just remind. He said, "Remember, we talked about." What, when you go to something, you said, it's like I've been there before. He said, you had. Because that's how he, I think he introduced it that way by saying, every time we have a final right, you experience a final rights. Mm -hmm. You're experiencing Easter. Think about the Holy Easter. The first Easter you received, you, you were a part of, and you can remember you remember that one, just like you remember your confirmation. Or you remember when you were baptized, if you were not a, an infant being baptized. This is a first time. He says, let it come to your mind and it'll help give you some strength to think about the glorious thing of the resurrection. And he just left it there. Mm -hmm. I said, Father Joe, when you make that up? He said, no, I didn't make it up. I really didn't make this up. He said, I'd like to give credit to somebody. He said, but that's the only thing I can say. Mm. So immediately when that, I know someone's going to have a, have a funeral, that comes back to my mind. Mm. I'm going to experience another Easter. Well, this is appropriate, I guess, because you um, you, you, well, I would say you was at a funeral, but you recently had to, um, have, I guess, have the same thing with your, with your husband. Uh, it was a funeral a couple of days ago. Very uh, excellent program. I know you've seen the program because you, because you put it together, you have put it together. But I was wondering, uh, because in the program, you know, like most funerals, they have an order of service. It very, seemed like it was very, very well organized. Uh, people spoke. But, you know, in these kind of things, it's very rare that the spouse, you know, the uh, that was separated from the from, from, from the person is, speaks at the funeral. Because usually they're too distraught. Or, you know, you know, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Now, if and, you know, they have all these, you know, preachers and people doing poetry and, and singing solos and all the rest of that stuff. If you were on the program, what would you do? What would you say? Probably, thank you mm -hmm. for your prayers. That would be the first thing I'd say. And I would preface it by saying, it has been a method by which the method that I'm able to withstand and try to go through this experience about Walter. It was you here and those who are not here whose prayers sustain me. Basically, I'm saying thank you. And I will say to you, if ever you are in a situation where you need strength or you want strength, try a little prayer and thank you for coming. Mm. Let me ask you another question. If you, now we know, we know, the, 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 you know, your husband has a favorite gospel song that someone sang at the, uh, mm -hmm. at the service. If you could sing a gospel, you know, you're part of the choir anyway, but if you could sing a song at a service, what song would you sing? Not the song that he particularly liked, but what song would you sing to your husband at this service? Mm. Probably those who wait on the Lord. And I think the former name would be it is well with my soul. Mm. 
I would do that. How, how, does, how does that go? Uh, you know. uh, one piece like a river I turned out of my way when sorrows like sea billows roar whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul mm. that's mm. the chorus part mm. Mm. that is one of mine but the one leading to it would be from the holy scriptures that says uh, I have not have you not seen? Have you not heard? The Lord is so great and mighty. I can run and not faint. I can walk. No, I can fly. Ooh, fly and not faint. I can rise and I'll always fall into the hands of the Lord. And there are two other things you, that you can do. But all of this is based on the Lord's intervention saying, I'll take care of you, my child. And then we go into that, the anthem, it is well with my soul. Now, of course, we're, we're I'm saying we're in the South. I actually, so for some reason, I know Virginia is a South. <laughs> Excuse me, I know Virginia is a South, but somehow, I don't know, I, I know it's a South. Anything below Washington, D.C. or Baltimore is a South. But um, does, uh, I guess the, the church tradition gets stronger the more, the more you go in the Southern United States. So you had a, you have a long, a lot of traditions, you know, you, you had to go to college, you had to be in a, in a sorority, you know, of course you had the church training from the very beginning, you had a fair, solid family and neighborhood training. Tell me about those things that weave together. How does that hold, a, you know, that life has changed, you know, the community has changed. Some of those ingredients are no longer in the weave, in the braid, if you will. Well, have you seen that change? I mean, how, what? I see it changing more maybe in the year like this past year and up to now because you have people well in the family who are part of the organizing or from different quote churches that they attend regularly and they had there's a tendency to see some of those traditions and practices at different churches a little different. They end up having the final rites. But to get to that point <clears throat> and how they do it is different. That's why I have to be careful that I am not influencing the the thinkings and the, my ideas of what is ser a service should be like, not based on my experiences more in the Episcopal Church or the Catholic Church than I would any other church. <clears throat> and I have to be careful not to put that there. But I, I'm also cognizant of the fact that Sometimes people who are attending a service, a final rites, could be their first one. And they will, the, they may think that this is the way it should be all of the time because it's in my, quote, church. In some of the churches, <clears throat> parishioners are at a practice of 
planning the program, even to the point of suggesting sermon items and things of the sort. And I guess they do that just so they could be a little familiar with the deceased or the family. Oh, I see. Yeah. But you see, uh, but you have to remember that if your church has a practice of having a, an organization in the church to assist the family in the program planning, that's okay. Hmm. But that's changed recently because you had the funeral homes were now almost... <clears throat> but they're still, even though it's in the funeral home, they're still using the funeral home chapel mm -hmm. just as the name of the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And since you are using a different setting, the service should not be any different. Only thing is, come on, space. That's the only thing that's be, that should be different. No, that's say should, that might be different because mm -hmm. of in a different place. Yeah. That's only time. This uh, this has nothing to do with anything. It just came to my mind because you said, uh, in, you know, any chapel is like the name of a church. And I remember when I was in, uh, when I was in Rome, when I went to the, you know, the Vatican, have all these tourists, if, whatever it is. You did. Oh, yeah, sure. I've been a lot of places. But, uh, um, but in this, in the Sistine Chapel, you know, the famous chapel where the painting on the ceiling, mm -hmm. of Michelangelo and all that stuff. Um, I, since I was Catholic, well, I, I grew up Catholic, you know, um, I'm not, a, it doesn't matter, but I actually, you know, and was and prayed in that chapel with all these tourists. Every once in a while, the, the, the guard would say, silencio, because it's a chapel. People don't realize that because they're tourists, right? Uh -huh. So I was just, it's a weird thought. I mean, I don't even know what I'm talking about right now, but I wonder if they ever have funerals in that chapel because it's still a chapel. You know, even though you have tourists, I mean, that's why I say funerals, you know, they would have it a separate time. They would cut off the tourists or whatever have you. Or is that, you know, it's kind of interesting. You can have a, any chapel is a nave, you know, any chapel is. I don't remember. I was trying to recall. <clears throat> it was in the States that they were de doing a de dedication. They were some kind of concentration that they were doing. And during that time, they were going to honor, I forgot who, what his name is, but what did he they do went in? into an outdoor field oh. and built really the, the, a chapel, um, you know, a place of worship, so to speak. Mm -hmm. They had the seats out there, you know, like the congregational seating. But if you looked up, they had built a sanctuary, built just like you thought you were inside. St. Peter's Chapel mm. had everything. The only thing they didn't have up there was the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> but they had the right reverend this one and the something by the something of the, you knew all the hierarchy mm -hmm. F folks who runs a Catholic church I think bought those folks from wherever they lived in the world they were there and they had the nerve to sing a gospel tune the, their choir their first time ever to sing gospel they had to learn how to sing the song. Brother, that was so beautiful. You found yourself being part of the congregation there. And when it's time for the children to come up for Holy Communion, I don't know which priest that was or bishop. He had a mic on his and when the little child came, he said, ask the child the name. He said, his name is Anthony. Anthony what? Anthony Sloan. Depend and to protect the side child, Anthony Sloan. Who we know something is something is something is something. And you, your thought was, 
Hey, this man knows me. You just told him your name. <laughs> but the way he said it, it was as he's known you all your life. He said, God bless you, my child. No, no, God bless you, Anthony. And you said, yes, sir. Because he's a grown man. Now, you from that old school. You better say yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mr. Tim, he said, you're welcome. <laughs> and then there was a little chuckle. Mm -hmm. But when they got to the actual dedication, I mean, concentration of that gift, I said, that's a that's a long that's that's good enough to live for. Cause they gonna do all that fanfare because they had music with it, and they had the reason that they were doing this for this person. Uh, had special. Someone wrote a special prayer. Uh, somebody from the family uh, said something that was special. It was just a good service, mm -hmm. you know. You, you couldn't say a program because it was most like a, to me, it was more like a service. Like you would, couldn't get to go to mass on, on one day and you could turn the television on and get the mass right on the television from that type of a service. I said, this is great. And I tell my brother, Duck, when we call Duck, I said, Duck, when you and Yvonne, his wife, start saying that you live in Pittsburgh, uh, North Carolina, I said, you then become a Carolinian. Why don't, I said, have you noticed that the native, quote, native Carolinians say Kalan? He said, they do. And I said, have you heard the people who've been in, in Virginia a long time will say they're from Virginia? Like it's a YA. He mm -hmm. said, yes, but you don't say Virginia. I said, what do I say, Doug? You say Virginia. Is it because it, has, it ends, Virginia is spelled at the end is I-A? I said, I guess so. That's what I was taught when I was a little girl in school, mm -hmm. that we live in the state of Virginia. And it's become a habit. Now you were born in Virginia? You were born in Virginia? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right there on Church Street at, and also at uh, DePaul Hospital, which was then it was St. Vincent Hospital. But it was it still uh, was to all. Now I read a long time ago, long long time ago, that someone said that uh, people don't necessarily. Well, most of the time, people don't live more than ten miles from where they were born. I've heard that too. Hmm. I guess it knew it because maybe midwives and things played a great part. Mm -hmm. In um, uh, people who were having babies, if it was not a midwife, it was probably a um, quote mature uh, uh, member of the family. Like when Walter's house, if Mama was getting ready to have, when thing was time to have the baby, she would get the oldest child, which was Roland. To go around to cut out cutting Lizer's house. Cousin Lizer was also part-time midwife. So every all the kids in the house knew if they, <laughs> they're going to get cousin Lizer, they're gonna have a baby born soon. Don't know what the sex is, but then they're gonna have a baby. And someone made the tale, and I don't know how they derived at it. But they said every one of Pinky's children, first words were, cousin, not cuz, cousin Eliza. They said, 
well, who is cousin Eliza? Why didn't you, <laughs> why didn't you get cousin Eliza? He said, because the children said their first word for cousin Liza. I said, Walter, did you say cousin Liza when you were born? He said, I don't think cousin Liza was around there then, doing that kind of work. He said, though they're not saying cousin Li cousin Liza. They said, <laughs> say cousin, they're saying, Wah! waking up from into the word. First sound they was doing with crying, saying, Wah! I said, Well, where did it, cousin Liza come? Say, so you know how people can start something and they keep right on using it. And the more you hear it, mm, the more you know, expect it. So I said, Walter, I'm so glad when, when Walter was born that he didn't know Cousin Liza that way. Because I can see them now in that DePaul hospital probably saying this is a saint. <laughs> they would stop the service. This is Let's have a special service and saint this child because he's talking about the, the Holy Mother or the cousins or the, something in the Bible. I said, Cousin Liza. And the other day somebody said something. You know who's missing? Somebody said, Cousin Liza. <laughs> I said, Cousin Liza. I said, Cousin Liza's heart may be here, but that's going to be it. But Mama said, if it had not been for cousin, cousin Liza, she don't know what she would have done because they didn't have any money for the uh, the pediatrician or the that doctor during that time. You had to get what you could get. But she said, plus, my old man had left us anyway. He <laughs> said, so we weren't going to do much uh, having some conversation. They said, who, who do you think would be a substitute? See, it was no substitute. The only person they had was Cousin Liza. And she played that role for all of Walter's brothers and sister. Mm -hmm. Sister, because he had two. But uh, it looked like the neighbors then became, well, Mama said that was the first time she really saw neighbors work together. Mm. So church is a, is a place where um, the, entire, the community can come together uh, more forcefully or, 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 or better. Or, you know. mm -hmm. mm. Well, All the, conditions. It seems like uh, Cousin Liza and, and the well, midwives of people are very important in the community then. In this day and age, who's who is important in the community to you, to people? Do do you think who's a you know? Because you know, we, you, when you ask for for somebody in the community, it, nobody's going to say a midwife these days. You know what I mean? <laughs> that but well, well they, they are midwives. Say the name. They will say favorite. Uh, I mean, what, what kind of what kind of what's person? What's your like, first like? wife's name? I mean, your wife's name. Oh, Gertrude. Who? Gertrude. 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 They yeah. would say, uh, who was the doctor's name? Reverend Gertrude. Mm -hmm. That that would be, the, may not, may not know her last name, but they know a name, and that would be Gertrude, and that, and the people in the community will give her a title. Ah, uh, I see, I see. Uh, Reverend. Did you call Reverend Gertrude? Let her know you feel like you're going to have that baby tonight or something. <laughs> and Mama would say to them, no, I haven't. But I'll send one of the one of the sons around. Yeah. So the community, the community names you. I guess that's when, when you have all the jazz people, you have to duke this or count that or, or king this. I mean, is that uh, is just the community. In other words, the community names you. The community gives you your, 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 your task in the community. They do. And where I came up, there were a bunch of grandmothers and grandfathers, and they became the captains of the ships. So they were important people in the community. He, I thought that's why they were, that's why mom, mother and daddy were able to get a place in Oak Creek Park, because they had some assistance with the 
grandmothers and grandfathers in the community. Brother, it got to the point that if you were, I was out there playing and I didn't have on my play quote shoes, before my daddy could get off that bus coming from the shipyard and get in the house to say hello to everybody and give us a hug, daddy would already know. Now, daddy was working in Portsmouth, across the water, in that little bus where they have stops where everybody was on that bus getting off. When he got home, he knew about it. He would know what had happened in the community. And the only way we thought daddy would know that is because some of the grandmothers and the grandfathers must have called daddy. But you didn't call people on their jobs. We didn't know that. And told them what had happened. So when daddy got the news from us or from mother, he already knew it. But daddy was a cool cat. Daddy would say, really? Wow. How did that happen, honey? And mother said, ask him. <laughs> and my brother, one next to me, would say, well, daddy, the only thing we did was, he said, oh, that's what they were talking about. What they were talking about. We thought they meant the people in the environment, you know, around us, or school, or any place where there would be group of groups of people. And my brother, who became the preacher, made this statement, and he had, he died with that statement. Good Lord in heaven. When he would say that, he was saying it because he was. It's the truth. Rather than saying it's the truth, that what the person has done or said. And mother said, didn't I tell you for taking the Lord's name in vain? And I grew up thinking that when you made that statement that you were taking the Lord's name in vain. But he was using it in a method, a method that was not spiritually acceptable. Well, you know, um, uh, well, you don't notice, but I'm, I'm, I'm involved in, in uh, the arts, you know, the, uh, theater and, and uh, radio. But there's this recording of when, Mah when Mahalia Jackson uh, sang for Duke Ellington. Mm -hmm. It's the first time. She always sang, and she never sang a secular song. But for this one album, I think it was called uh, Black, Brown, and Beige, classic mm -hmm. album, um, she sang Come Sunday. It's one of my favorites. Oh, yes. She sang that. It's only non, the only, uh, uh, you know, non-secular song she's ever sang. But they have recorded it in the rehearsal. See, it was just something happened and, you know, she was, you know how you spontaneously uh -huh. say something. She said, oh, Jesus. And she, oh, she was, she caught herself because she felt she was saying the Lord's name in vain. Did she? And so that was a reason her style, her, her music and selections were based on that feeling that she would have. And it's just heavy into, into, into that music, into that, that world, you know. But the world has changed. I think what, what, what I'm hearing you saying is that when we had community, then, uh, then there were a lot of important people. The more you have, the less community you have, the kind of important people you have are not no longer necessarily in the community. That's right. Mm. Mm. That is right. My sister had the worst earache that I could remember. And I think it stands out because on Saturday, our job was not only doing cleaning the house and getting the things ready, but you had to get yourself ready for Sunday. Her ears were hurting so badly, brother. I mean, she would sit there trying to eat or trying to do anything, and the tears would roll down her little cheek. I said, little sister, what's the matter? She said, it hurts. It hurts so bad. It hurts. I said, what hurts, baby? 
it got to the point the fear, pain, pain was so great that she didn't even want to say the word ear. She was just point near. Not on, but near. Mother tried all the little stuff that she knew. Daddy didn't have any money to, pay, to take, go to the hospital, to pay for the hospital visit. Miss Smith, two doors down from us, decided in but one way to get rid of that headache, and I'm going to do it. She told little sister, Joyce, she said, yes, ma'am, go in that house and get me one of those spoon, serving spoons. I was supposed to say, serving spoon. We had a spoon, but we had a spoon, and that spoon was a multi-purpose spoon. <laughs> She came in the house looking for us. She said, where, is sir? where are our serving spoon? I said, serving spoon? We don't have any. We got a spoon. She said, well, well give me the largest spoon we have in that drawer. I gave her a spoon that we would say it's a soup spoon. That side. <laughs> she took it home and told her daughter, you got in the milk in your in your and your jugs up there. I said, the sister said, she said, Miss Smith bought me, want me to bring a spoon to ask the question to Mrs. Elizabeth, do you have any milk up there in those jugs? Mm -hmm. Well, she thought they were talking about jug jugs, not breasts, but jugs. <laughs> <laughs> they, can you see? Oh, you you can see why the child thought it was something else, and I'm glad I wasn't with it because I would have asked the question. Grandma Smith, where did you keep your? Where does she keep her jugs? And she's gonna say, child. But I didn't ask that question because I will still be hearing Miss Smith trying to explain jugs. The difference between jugs and jugs. There are two kinds of jugs. I said to myself, this is the reason daddy and mother have us over here. To teach us things that we would not get otherwise. Uh, I hope I wouldn't have gotten it otherwise. Uh, but because a grandmother said it, mm -hmm. or a grandfather would say it, we began to start saying, if you want to know anything, and bank on it. You better come from the mouths of a grandmother or a grandfather. Mm -hmm. Even the parents got to the point and said, go down there and ask uh, Grandma Perkins or something mm -hmm. what what we should do about your arm or what, or about your ear or about your nose, your eyes, any, anything. Do you look all right to go anywhere? Well, look, Jose, I'm curious. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm very curious. What happened <laughs> with the ear, with the spoon, with the jugs? Oh, they had to put some milk from her breasts in that spoon. And then you put two drops of Perigard. Who? Perigard is a medicine. Mm -hmm. Now it has to be prescription wise. Then you could just go to the pharmacist and ask for, you want a bottle? A small bottle of Perigari. Is that, is that like peroxide? Is it the same thing or is it different? It's, it's a, I call it a dope because it deadens you. Mm. That was the, she put the Perigari in there for the pain. And you take your, uh, she, I think she took her, her finger after she, you know, she had washed her hand and she just took the tip of her finger to stir it, to mix it. Mm. In the ear? Or in the, where? In, in the in the spoon. In the spoon, okay, sure. Then you, the little sister had to put her head like this. Uh -huh. And Mrs. Smith said, and don't move. Miss Smith said, don't move. You're not going to move. You stay right there. Miss Smith was a big lady for us. You know, mm -hmm. We were little, little skinny children. Those, they Little sister putting her head there. And I said, don't move, little sister. I said, you want me to hold your head? 
She said, hold her head. <laughs> I'm going to hold her head because she told me. Mm -hmm. She put that little that concoction in little sister's ear. And little sister said it was burning. Mm -hmm. She could feel a burning, like something going round and round and round. A little bubbling up, a little effervescence. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But she, she had never, she, only thing she could say was, it was bar, it boiling, it, it was boiling in her ear. That was Saturday. Sunday comes, we're getting ready to go to church. The sister was getting ready to go to church and she said, where are you going? No, young lady, where are you going? This is my mother. She said, the church? She said, we have to, I have to go see Reverend E.L. Harris and tell him that I'm all right now. I said, all right now? How does he know you were not all right then, you know, before? She had said something to someone who was going to be going by the church to tell Mr. Reverend E.L. Harris that her ear was hurting so bad. And she she knew he's going to pray for her ear to get well. Mm -hmm. In her own mind's eye, even though that concoction that Mrs. Smith fixed up for her ear, her only salvation in her own mind was that if she could get to church to see Reverend E.L. Harris, to let him know that she was all right now. In other words, you don't have to pray anymore because I'm all well. Mm -hmm. Three or four days later, that, that next week, the sister was out there trying to play. And she said something started. Rolling, rolling around in her head, her ear again, the same way it was when they put that milk and, and stuff in her ear. She said she did this, and a wad of wax mm. came out of her ear on the walkway where she was out there with. Shaped just like an eardrum would be. And she said when it fell out of her ear, she said all that rolling around stopped. I said, little sister, you mean you tell me you didn't hear it anymore? She said, no, I didn't hear it anymore. She, so she said, it must have been that what came out of my ear was causing me to have that roaring sound. Or it could have been that concoction eating at the root and loosening up that wax in her ear. So it started out basically that uh, she got pain relief, but then three days later, the cause of the problem came out, namely the earwax. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, then she but she had she had planned this to tell Reverend E. L. Harris hmm. thanks for his prayer. But she put it on prayer too. She said it had not been for his prayer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mrs. Smith, Grandma so, Smith would not have known what to do. So Grandma and the Reverend get credit for this yeah. for this miracle. The whole family would get credit because oh, okay. Mrs. Smith would say, "I think we ought to have some collard greens for supper." They don't have a collard green in the house. Mm. Um, and they want, I guess they can want to know, what is this miracle grandmother going to do? How is she going to get collard greens in the house when we don't even have collard greens in the house? You had to go all the way to Airline Boulevard to Buddy White's store and hope they have some left in the on the bed because grandma says you would like to have some. Hey, why are you there? You tell her daughter. Get enough over there for those Norman children. You got a whole lot of Norman family. You know, they got a whole lot of youngins in there. And that's when I started hearing people refer to children as youngins. Mm -hmm. They, I thought they were saying youngins. But what they were saying were young ones. Mm -hmm. But when they said it, Said it so fast, it sounded like youngins to me. Mm. 
And everybody else. <laughs> and they got to the store and Buddy White had some collars left on the bed. And I think they must have gotten every one that he had and brought them home. And Miss Smith became the chef installed herself. And she said, I'ma clean them. Because yeah, I don't want <laughs> I don't want any grits. But but doesn't it take about two or three days to clean collard greens out of only two? Uh uh. <laughs> Not way Miss Smith did it. She did her a parent like a paring knife mm -hmm. and, a, and a pair of scissors. Mm -hmm. She take that scissors and cut the the <laughs> well, all right. You're along the vein. Cut the where there's leaf attached to the core. Yeah. She cut the leaves from the core. So you only got these, these leaves now. Now you go and pick up your other instrument, <laughs> your paring knife. She takes every leaf. I don't know what she was doing. I, I just saw it. That I think she was saying goodbye leaf or something. No, this is very interesting. This is very, 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 very important to me. Okay, because my um, my grandmother, excellent cook. Everybody says the grandmother. My grandma was an excellent cook. So like, say, for instance, a lot of times the Catholic priest would go around to each parishioner's house, right? There would be some sort of, they had to do like yes, every, every yes, Saturday, whatever day yes. it was, whatever day it was. And, um, but what would happen is the priest would always come to our house first. Because my grandmother oh, was such a good cook. They had the best reputation. Food. Yeah. And so I asked my grandmother, I said, well, grandma, how come you, you know, why do you, how you, why do you cook so well? She said, no, well, how do you, she said something like that. And I said, and she said, because I cook with love. Yes. Isn't that, that beautiful? beautiful? But this is the thing. When I, when, like, say, for instance, that same thing, I do that thing with spinach, too. I cut the, off the off the vein, mm -hmm. and then I actually chop the vein up and make a little saute with onions. That's a side thing, but there's very spinach leaf, which I, you know, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I, my grandma taught me how to do that with uh, also spinach leaves and beet leaves, mm -hmm. put in a steamer with ginger in the bottom, and then, you know, we'd have that to eat. But my point really is, in this day and age, when you cook something with your hands, basically the love comes from you to, or to the food and then the food, that love that you put into that food can be shared with whoever is eating that meal. Mm -hmm. But if you have if you have machines who have cut up that thing or whatever have you, then there's a, a, a missing thing of love, at least for that process. Because the people don't touch, you know, you just put it, take it out the bag and dump it in the thing, whatever it is. You know, so I, I, I'm just, I always think about that. You know, that's why I look, I, when I cook, I, I take a, it's therapy for me. I take a long time. <laughs> I'm always messing with that food. But you see, my grandma had, daddy's mother, had two water buckets. She had one in the kitchen. No, she had two in the kitchen. One was up on the like a little shelf. We call it the water shelf. And she had some unbleached muslin over there so dirt and, or flies or in the, would not get into the water. Mm -hmm. But she had another bucket in there, water bucket, that was on a like a preparation table, table. And that is the water that she used for cooking our uh, meals, uh, if you wanted some coffee or tea or something like that, she would, you would get the water from the second shell. Mm -hmm. I said, I thought it was before anybody in the family who's tall. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that, I thought that, it was for such tall people. That, that would definitely exclude <laughs> You. <laughs> I would not have been didn't didn't bother me because I didn't I couldn't reach up there. Mm -hmm. And they also had a window. And this window was never to me clean. Mm -hmm. I said, one day when I get to be large enough, I'm gonna ask little mama, could I wash that window also? 
also means I'm going to be doing it some other place. Mm -hmm. She said, where, baby? Show me. So wait a second. That, that means that you are, you are adding extra tasks to your already all the tasks you have to do anyway? Uh -huh. so, so basically you volunteered for extra work. I volunteered because I just thought I'm on a cleaning spree. <laughs> that that greasy looking window should not be in the kitchen unless you're going to clean it. Unless it be clean. That was my rationale. So when your mama, when, when your mother, little mama said, said what, what are you talking about? Show me what, what, what did she say? She said to me Baby, if you have enough energy, when you finish the other windows that you're going to say you're going to do, let that be the last thing you do in case you have enough energy. She was not telling me not to. She just said, if I didn't have the energy. And she put that window at the end of my window cleaning. Brother, I didn't know that window was for. <laughs> And I used to see people go there to the window and take it even boiling something or frying those herons mm -hmm. and pour it in this something up there. I thought they were just pouring out in the yard. I didn't know there was a bucket under there to receive all of this. And I said, I'm going to fix that. When I finish cleaning that window, I'm going to clean out there. Around the area, on the ground, <laughs> where, where they're pouring everything. I said, no wonder the animals hang, the cats and the dogs visit this area. When I cleaned that window, and the folk were going around inspecting it, went, oh, you can see forever. I heard that expression for the first time. It was mean, was so clean. The window was so clean, you could see forever. Somebody said, no, I think it's more like I can see all the way to Plymouth. It's a little town. <laughs> I said, I know I washed these windows, but I didn't know I washed them that well. What did you use? Did you use vinegar in the water? What did you use? Uh, Probably I was using uh, P and G soap. Because mm. didn't, they didn't have any Windex in them like that. Mm. So I use the next thing I knew would cut dirt and make it clean and sparkling. And I didn't have to rinse it because you had to have some some rinsing water to, to rinse it. So I just cleaned it and I just took that piece of paper. Didn't have white, didn't have any paper towel and new, newspaper. Sears, Sears Roebuck the, the catalog, catalog pages. Paper. Oh. And I used the black and whites. Because I didn't want to use the cartoons in their pictures because I thought the pictures would not make it shine as bright as I wanted it to shine. So I just used it like a news area, the darker mm -hmm. colors. Mm -hmm. And I wipe it and wipe it and wipe it. So you use elbow grease, I say. <laughs> till you look and you can see, stand back like this and try to get a different angle. <laughs> to see. This is all right. We can go to the next window. Mm -hmm. My grandma said, came in and said, baby, I know these are not brand new. He said, but this is as close these windows have had ever been since they were new put in the house. And she said, how many more years? I said, I could have forgotten it how many years. She said, but the one thing I'd like to ask you, do you all have one of these windows at home? I said, no, ma'am. I've never seen one in my lifetime. She said, you see one now? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, no, you don't. She said, you know what kind of window that is? I said, yes, ma'am. Where you throw all the stuff to you? been cooking or want to cook and you have it left over and you just throw it out of the window and maybe the cats and the dogs will come here to visit and, and eat it or drink it. She said, baby, is that what you think that window was for? 
That's for Swill. I said, whew, thank you. Swill. What is Swill? I said, little mama, one day we on the front porch. Would you explain to me Swill? I said, because we don't have any of that at home, Double in Norfolk. She said, you don't have a swill? I thought every house had to have a swill. Now I'm really more confused. Aunt Azia, my uncle's wife, is one of the teachers around the community. Chuckled, and she said, <laughs> you knew, you knew here. She said, that's the face we throw all up. And she didn't ever say put, throw. Mm -hmm. We don't have any way we can uh, put. She, I don't know what she said, put or store. She used one of those words for placing it someplace. And that's the only place we just throw it out the window. I said, but Aunt Azealia, wouldn't it be better if the if the animals will come here to eat like that, to have something down there in a, like a bucket or a pan or something? We could you could pour that in there. It would be easier for them to eat it, won't, and they won't be get dirty. I saw that as being dirty, and she said, "No, but there is a there is something down there." I said, "Where?" She said, "Look at the window." And I was going to look through my newly developed window. <laughs> and I didn't see anything that looked like it would be used for a person, an animal to drink from. I just saw a wooden bucket about tall as this and big around as this. Mm -hmm. Greasy looking. Looked like it had not seen water for life. And I said, she said, do you see it? I said, no, I don't see what you're talking about. Only thing I see is that grease, <laughs> grease it, a wooden, wooden bucket, I think. I may have said bucket. I know I said greasy, wooden. And she laughed. She said, come here, baby. Let me show you what it looks like on the outside. I went out there and I said, oh. Oh, Aunt Azalea, I did not wash that part of the, that was the frame around the window. Mm -hmm. I said, I didn't wash that. She said, well, baby, that this is on the outside. What you were doing was the inside. And the animals are going to, may not drink. When you take it down there to the, where the pigs stay, they may not drink from that. So they would. They would be missing their grease and stuff. I said, you mean you clean something and the only thing you get is saying you think the pigs won't drink from it, don't want that because it's clean? You know, just because I try to tidy it. I used the word tidy up. I didn't say clean it up, tidy it up. But no one told me this. But this was my little mind speaking. Swill, it becomes the combination of all the things that you pour through that window mm -hmm. into that bucket, and it comes like a melting pot in there. Yeah, I guess you, I guess it would be a liquid compost. <laughs> yeah, that could be. She said, "When it's tomorrow," she said, "When when the uh, Otis, her my uncle's name was oh, first name was Otis." Go down there to feed the pigs and things. Go with him and see what their food looks like and what, how they enjoy it. I said, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I mean, I couldn't get up too early because <laughs> I'm going down there and see about this swill. Well, it's swill, it's, it's swill to us, but a special sauce to the pigs. <laughs> I went down there with Buddy that next morning and he had his little quote swill bucket in hand. He also had some corn and other kind of stuff that, that they, I guess, adore in another 
container. So he said, we're going to do yours, duck. They call me duck because I did not like the idea of going without any shoes. And I didn't want all that clay and stuff between my toes because I thought that was just dirty. He poured this new and improved stuff that I put together in the swill. And they came rushing over there to the trough. That's how another learn a new word down there too. You put the food in the trough and not in the bucket. Not in or not in the train or something. The little pigs got there. And the big pigs got there. And get ready to lap up or something. You know, they stepped back with an attitude, I thought. They don't want all that clean stuff. <laughs> they don't want. He said, watch and learn. He brought out the, the bucket, the swill. He poured that in another trough. And you should have seen those pigs gulping up that swill. Special sauce. That's what they had been accustomed to. And they didn't want those highfalutin high uh, Virginia food. I guess they call it that. He said, you see what I mean? Why you didn't have to wash that window and do all that? He said, this is what they like. And we make it an easy meal for them. We know what they like and we give it to them. <laughs> so from then on, they told me, said, Duck, when you, mama gave you that, gave you a pig, piglet. I said, yes. I said, but my pig doesn't eat that. They have to eat that. Can I just buy them some food? And so my pig, <laughs> so my pig won't have to eat that garbage. I thought it was look like garbage to me. He said, baby, that may be that way to us, to you. He said, but that is like eating uh, at the finest restaurant you would go. So you, you, have, to, you have to start having a, a palate like a pig rather than a palate like a little girl. Uh-huh. When you're in Rome, you do as the Romans do, supposedly. <laughs> but brother, from then on, my uncle told me, Duck, the pig that mama gave you, can he continue to stay back here until you leave? I said, oh, yeah, yeah, you can do that. Oh, that's right, you was visiting. We're, 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 this for the summer, for, uh, one, three, three, three weeks. But where, where was this at? Still in Virginia? In North, Roper, North Carolina. Oh, okay. Right on the side of the Almamar Sound Bridge, not too far from there. Okay. Now I understand. Okay. That's the longest bridge, I think, in, in that part of North Carolina. Wow. And uh, he said, and let him get, get used to corn. He said, I'll get some corn from the, he used to take the corn in the field and they go put it on a tractor and and they turn it into mash. some uh huh mm -hmm. like mash. Mm -hmm. I said mash. Where you buy mash? I said to myself. It wasn't another word. <laughs> That's another word. But I didn't say. I just said to to buddy. I said buddy, mm -hmm. where what store do you go when you buying some mash? He said, we don't have to go. I said, oh, Lord, my grandma and grand and uncle don't even have enough money to buy a match. He said, I said, buddy, how long does it take for you to go all the way to town and go to the store where they sell match and you, for you to get it and bring it back home? I said, because these pigs going to be hungry when you get back. He said, oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to spend my money at that old store. 
I said, but he didn't have any money. I said, I thought when you go to church, they take up a collection for the priest, for the minister. I said, they must not have had any money at that church to give Buddy. Because he can't even afford to buy mash. He said, I'm going to show you where the mash is. He took me to the barn. Like a car barn. He said, you see that thing? He said, what's that? I said, a tractor. He said, do you see that over there? I said, looks like corn to me. He said, what's that over there? I told him what everything I thought that they, things were. He said, you, you identify each one correctly, but it's only when you put them to get, together that it becomes the mash. You're mashing everything together. I said, that's why they call it mash, because you're mashing it all together. I said, they could say mixing it all together, but that wouldn't be appropriate. This wouldn't thing. be accurate. No. It, I'm gonna give, going out there and, and give them some mix. <laughs> <laughs> Got to go out and give them some mash. Now, not to mention the fact that, the, that you wouldn't have sour mash either. You know, that sour mash is yes. potent for you. Now, you see, they would just think I was absolutely out of my mind, but my grandmother would say, Baby, if you know how to make it, we can eat it. That's interesting. She didn't believe in wasting. Mm. And when the preacher had volunteered himself at the, had a revival meeting, he was the guest. They invited their own minister to be the guest speaker. Mm. Reverend Wallace went to little mama and said, Sis Sally, I heard you got a reputation around here. And she said, I guess so. I don't I don't know. They said you would say that. You don't know. Well, you're so good and kind and can cook so well. They say that's Sally. That sounds like Sister Sally. Uh, Sister Sally, what you having for dinner? She said, you know, I got some Lima beans, green lima beans. I got some uh, some bl black eyed peas. Uh, I'm listening too because I said I am seeing all that, and I was in there cooking some collard greens, three vegetables. She said, "I think uh, duck put some." Got some chicken up there, fried chicken. And she got some chicken without the gravy and some chicken with the gravy. They were my smothered chicken. <clears throat> and uh, she got, he said, that's two meats. She said, yeah. And she said, oh, I forgot she got some. She went to the smokehouse and, and got a, a couple of uh, slices of ham. Flavoring. He said. So that makes it three. Had three vegetables, three meats. She had rolls. I said, roll with the rolls. We haven't had any rolls. I didn't know we had any rolls. But Aunt Zia said, maybe I'll give you our roll, the rolls that she had in her, in her her stove. She had rolls. Had some cornbread, the cornbread fritters, mm. like pancakes, mm. and had another bread. I know there were three macaroni and cheese. Now, my uncle, Uncle Valen, said, Duck, is it all right for me to get me a plate and go out there and start eating? I said, Uncle Valen, would you mind sitting here at the table and be the uh, host for the pastor? Nobody asked him to come around here and move me out of my place to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Valen likes to get his meal and go on the front porch, not the back porch, the front porch. Get down on his knees and then get to his side and say his blessing. 
take his little silverware, if he was going to use it, and start fussing with his dog. Dog Jack the dog thought that every meal that Uncle Valen would have, that he was supposed to be there and watch him, I guess. And I think Uncle Valen was feeding him because I always saw him get an extra piece of silverware to take out on that front porch. So that day I asked him, could he please be the host at the table? Where do I sit, though? I said, if the minister is going to sit here, as he said, how you know? I said, everywhere I've been with Buddy and the ministers was sitting there eating, they always sat there. He said, and that puts me where? I said, here. I said, for a little small chat talking, if you, if you want to do that. He said, you know, Mama wouldn't want me to in here talking while I'm having dinner. I said, but I think today she would allow that. Oh, well, I don't know. My grandmother always said, you don't talk with your mouth full. Uh-huh. Which means you don't talk when you're eating. Didn't have to say that, did she? Well, then again, you, I guess you could. Well, we, but we she knew talk, if you tried to talk with your mouth full, you go, mm-hmm. Kinds of food before. But them. brother, after he's, I hadn't asked anybody to say the blessing. So I said, Uncle Valen, would you? I don't know why I turned to Uncle Valen, of all people, to say the blessing. Oh, boy. I said, well, Uncle Valen would say, Duck, you know I don't say that. You know, you would say it. I said, I don't want Uncle Valen to do it. I hope he doesn't volunteer. The pastor said, if it's all right, sister, I don't mind saying a word. I said, he said that word, word long. I said, if his grace is going to be as long as he's saying that word, word, <laughs> the food is going to be all <laughs> too cold. That was my only thing. I wanted him to get it at the right temperature. He said a nice, nice grace. Probably the shortest grace he's ever done, I guess. And they proceeded to eat. Sister, I said, yes, sir. Could you give me another, another, he didn't say a spoonful, he said a dab. Mm -hmm. A dab of gravy for his chicken. He was choosing the fried chicken but he wanted the gravy that we had there uh, of for the other chicken. So he's going to make his own mm. chicken. <laughs> Sound like something I would do. Brother, that. let me tell you. <laughs> I have seen people eat before. But to have your plate with fried chicken, with the imported, I call it the imported gravy. Fried chicken with gravy. Ham slices because he had two. Uh, had another meat. One, two, three. There were four meats. He had it on his plate. He had macaroni and cheese. He had uh, collards on that plate. He had the green lima beans and he had something else another the other vegetable but then he had no space for his bread so I said maybe I can do his gift one of those plates we're going to use for dessert and let that be his bread plate and I, I offered I said Reverend Wallace would you like to have a bread plate he said, yeah, bring me, bring me, bring me a, 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 a bread plate. And asked my uncle, Valen, don't you want a bread plate too? <laughs> uncle Valen looked at me, I said, yeah, he said, how about sending one down here? Uncle Valen said, send one down here. I could imagine somebody sending something by throwing it. Mm -hmm. That's like send a football or baseball or something. I said, I'll bring it to you. So I got from the seat at the table. 
and excused myself and went around there and took him <laughs> what he wanted. From then on, if he asked he wanted anything, he would tell me, Duck, can I have some more of that green beans? I said, you don't have to ask Uncle Van. I just go do it. He said, no, you're doing well. I'd rather for you to give it to me. It looked like I was louncing him out, you know. Well, maybe maybe he felt that by you giving it to him, he was getting an extra dose of love. Now I know. But see, I didn't know then. I just thought I was just trying to fill in for little, because little mama didn't feel up to it. Because mm. she, she would have done the cooking herself, all of it. Mm. But she just wasn't feeling well. Mm. And I said, well, I can step up the plate for little mama. Time for dessert. He said, sister. I said, yes, sir. What well, we got for, we got in dessert? I said, you know what? Dessert. I said, he's talking about dessert, I think. I said, over here, on the table. We use one of my Aunt Zelia's little picnic, I call it a little picnic table. We had apple pie. No, a- no, apple jelly cake with apple jelly on it. Chocolate cake, sweet potato pie. Mm-hmm. I can see it right now. It's so good looking. Well, with- apple pie. Mm-hmm. And also had some, they looked like to me they would be bun- uh, muffins, mm-hmm. but they called it something else. It was a cake with a uh, and what the fruit was on the property that was garnished with that. Mm. He said, I said, I said, what what would you like? He said, well, since you got so much up there, sister, can you get me a get me a plate to put it on? I bought him another one of those little small things that you use for bread. Mm. He said, I mean uh, a plate plate. I don't mean a I see the man wants enough. He probably wants two slices or something. He said, why are you there, sister? How about give me a little a sample of each one? A slither of each one. That meant I would have to get the knife and cut a little piece of the, you know, each one. He said, sister, I didn't mean that. I don't mean a sample. <laughs> I said, what would you like, Reverend Wallace? He said, I want the whole thing. He wanted the whole slice of everything. I politely obeyed him because he was a preacher and our guest. And I don't want him to go around into the other preachers and say, you went to Sally's house to have dinner and the only thing they had would be a slither of this. And <laughs> So I said, I'll fix him. I took the dinner plate and put a slice of everything on that dessert table. He said, now this is what you call good eating. <laughs> you, but I want to know what is he going to take with him? Do I have to give him a take-home bag or something <laughs> on his travels back home? He said, this is going to keep me from having to stop at the store and getting me or something to mouth myself on. Mouth myself. That's the only thing you could be in mouth is be put it in your mouth. But how you mouth yourself? I didn't ask that question because I didn't want to hear a sermon. <laughs> Brother, let me tell you, I thought he was going to say, do you have a box or a bag or something that you can put my desserts in? My man stood up and said, Bruh. like you're getting yourself together. To go home, I thought, he was standing up and getting himself ready so he can eat a dessert. He ate the dessert, all of it, and said to me, uh, sister, I said, yes, sir. He said, one of those things over there on that, on that dessert table is saying to me, you need some more. I said, oh, my gosh. <laughs> dessert was talking to him. <laughs> I got to. Get another 
bag. That's all I thought it was a bag to put it in. I said, but he must going to put the bag, the things that he just, he was just finished. He's forgotten he's had a dessert, but he wants to take this home with him, I guess. So I politely, and he said, don't you have a plate that I can take home with me? Uh Uh-oh. I said, I don't have to wonder no more. I know what the man wants, some dessert to take home with him. So I obeyed, because that was the preacher being our special guest. I got that plate, and I put everything was on that dessert table, on that plate, and it was crowded. Some of the, the, the cake, you can see parts of it leaning off the plate, because it was a nice thick slices. And I said, he said, you got a sack I can put it in? I had to get used to that word. Rather than saying a bag, he said a sack. I said, that's what they say down here, maybe in North Carolina. They don't say a bag, they say a sack. So I said, what size sack you think we need? You need? He said, oh, any, any, any sack you have in here. And I said, I don't know what a sack is to myself. I said, Reverend Wallace, if I take you to the place where little mama keep her bags, would you mind looking in there and find a sack for me? He said, baby, you didn't know another name for the bag would be sack. That's what we do down here in Carolina. (laughs) I said, sack. He said, S-A-C-K, like a sack, sack. Like you put your peanuts and stuff in. I said, I am really down here in North Carolina where little mama lives. I bet little mama didn't even know that. So I'm trying to internalize all these expressions I'm hearing. I gave him the sack. And he took that thing of, of, of desserts and shoved it in so gently like it was going to cry or something. And fold it over so neatly. He said, now, this is worthy to go back and preach some more. Mm-hmm. I guess uh, if you don't preach according to what you ate, the service will not be long. Because you you won't be able to stand it. Mm-hmm. Brother, let me tell you. Not only we got up and had said a, a thank you prayer, a thought or mm-hmm. something. My uncle Valen said, can I go back on the porch? Mm-hmm. Not, he was saying, Pie, sir? I don't know what that is. I didn't either. He said, I'm going back on the pie. I said, Duck, it's all right. My, no, I know my jack is waiting for me. I said, the porch. Mm-hmm. I said, maybe they say, rather than saying porch, they say pie, sir. I said, but he's the only one that says Paisa. Everybody else was saying on, on the porch. I said, yes, sir. He said, uh, Reverend Wallace, it was so nice having you uh, at the table, you no, know, joining at the table with us. He said, my pleasure. I could, wish I could come every Sunday. I said, I hope you don't come every <laughs> Sunday. You know. But didn't he also now get a plate from you because this dessert was on a plate to put into the sack? No. He decided that he only wanted the dessert. Yeah, but wasn't the dessert on a plate? One of your plates? Uh-huh. So when he put the... Didn't he have to put the plate into the sack? Mm-hmm. That means when he was leaving, he was leaving with the dessert on the plate, which, on means, the that he, plate. which means that he actually also got a plate from you. Yes, he did. And it wasn't even my, uh, my grandmama's. It was my auntie's. So she was standing, came in, in there to see if she could help in a way. And she, I guess she said, that plate looks familiar to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Didn't say anything. <laughs> but it came in there. <clears throat> to shake his hand and, and uh, said it. He enjoyed his sermon that day. He said, he said, well, look forward to the night. I said, don't want him mercy. 
That's why that man needs so much food. He's preaching two times. Two sermons in one day. No wonder he wanted to come down here. Buddy uh, took him by the porch, the little back porch. And he was in the habit of rinsing his hands, washing his hands after a meal. I know this little mama told me I could get in the drawer in her room that unbleached muslin and bring it out on the porch. Put it there by the fan, face fan. And I said, this is little mama's unbleached muslin. She doesn't use this all the time. I said, well, maybe this is what you do when your preacher going to eat with you. Got that holy hands. <laughs> <laughs> he stood there and I, I just said, if he can wash his hand, he, he can't wash his hand in cold water. He need to have some warm water. So I went in the kitchen and the pot that she, we used for making her for her coffee and tea, I took some of that water. It was still warm. And I poured that in the face pan. Mm -hmm. And I went on the top shelf in the kitchen to get the water and poured some of that in there so it wouldn't be too hot for his little delicate hands. Preacher Came hands. out there and washed his hand. So I'm telling you the truth. It, you, this won't be my last time I'm coming here, Sally. Tell her, told me to tell mother that, mama that. I said, Reverend Wallace. He said yes. I said you could tell little mama she's right on the front porch. That's where Sally is. I wonder where she was. She didn't get in and get anything to eat because I was getting ready to tell you, but to fix her a plate and take it out there to her. I said no. This is what she would do anyway, even if we didn't have you. You were not having dinner with us. Just call me a guest. Just call me a guest. I said, this is what she would do anyway if we didn't have a guest. Oh, that's the way y'all do down here. He finished drying his hand. And I guess, I guess he said, what do I do with this towel? Somebody said, I'll take the, t I'll take that and, and uh, put it with the other, other towels and things. You mean you tell me you got another tower like this? I said to myself, I don't like the tower. I don't like the tower. You gonna ask for the tower to take home with you? He said, one thing about it, after a while, when I started buying towers and things, I'm gonna come down here to ain't sell this house. Cause she has all the right kinds of things here. The longest day I have witnessed in a long time was that day. Yeah. Because you can't just leave them there. You had to ex go with him through the house, through the front porch where little mama is. Little mama looked at me and, and did this. I said, she's chuckling. That's when she, you could always tell when she was chuckling because her body would do this. <laughs> she said, I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> oh, she's been through this before. She said, you know, okay. she said I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> she said, but see, you didn't have anybody to help you. <laughs> I said, that's all right. I said, he's getting ready to go. He's getting ready to go, little mama. She said, hey, you know. I said, he has his going bag with him. And she said, going bag. I said, he got some desserts in that bag. She said, the bag right there? I said, yeah. She said, he has all that dessert. I said, he has a, a sample of each. She says, anything left in there? <laughs> I said, see, I wasn't on the sweet potato kick then. I could have said everything but sweet potatoes. I said, did he, she said, did he take the gel, any of the jelly cake? I said, that was the first thing I sliced. He took that. I said, that's in there. She said, what about the uh, coconut? No, the jelly cake. Apple pie. Mm -hmm, the apple pie. Apple pie. What about the apple pie? He didn't want that, did he? I said, he wanted a big, he wanted a slither. He said, did he tell you what a slither was? I said, no, ma'am. But I thought it meant the same thing as a sample. She said, did you do what he asked you to do? I said, no, because I knew if it was a sample, you need a, 
uh, more than just that little slim, thin slice where you can see through. He said, he was asking for a slice. And that's the way he said, that's the way he was talking. Brother didn't say a slice of it. He said a slither, meaning he didn't want all of it. He just wanted a, a little bit. So she said, what time does service start? And I told her what time. I said, no, it says, Reverend Wallace didn't say that. I said, I asked her. She said, ask him. So I didn't know what to do. Well, she knew what, what she had to do. I guess I put her shoes back on and go back to church. And I said, Reverend Wallace, what time does the evening service start? That what you call at home? I said, if it's in the evening, I just say it's evening. Well, what you say about morning? I said, it's morning service. He said, how long are you going to be, honey? No, sister, how long are you going to be here? I said, I have to go home next week. You think I could come back here to visit you again? I said, I won't be here. <laughs> Why? I said, I have to go back home. You don't live here all the time, sister. I said, no, sir. Well, why are you down here? I said, to visit my grandmother and uncles and aunts and cousins and things. And to visit the church. That's a good reason. Well, you take care of yourself when you go back to the city. <laughs> and I thank you for all your kindnesses. And he used another word I can't recall. It means... Gestures, outstanding gestures. He said, because you introduced me today to what lavish living and eating is about. Mm. My grandmother looked at me and she, I guess she said, that poor baby, that poor child. I told you my grandmama was the one responsible for making the bread for Holy Communion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leavened bread. I didn't know that. I thought little mama had pressure problem. Why she didn't put salt in her, in the batter. That's the only person I ever know who's limiting their salt. I said, that's her problem. So I said, I'm going to try some. When I make the bread next time, I'm going to eat a slice of her, I mean, a piece of her bread to see what it tastes like. Tastes like the rest of the bread to me. Of course, it wasn't evidently, I didn't, wasn't putting that much salt in the regular. My uncle told us not to go into the, not the barn, but in the crib. And I said, Uncle Balin, how are you spelling that word crib? You mean B A R N? I said, that says barn. He said, no, I call it my crib. We found out why he didn't want us to go into the crib. Because he was the one that made the wine for Holy Communion. Mm -hmm. Had it in the keg in the uh, barn with the corn shucks and things to keep it cool. Keep the wine cool while it was brewing or getting made. And he didn't want us to go in there. Yeah, fermenting, yeah. Because we go in there and get get it germy and it would not be the taste that you're supposed to get when you have Holy Communion. Mm -hmm. I said, that's why he could have could have said, don't go in there and tell me why. Don't say just don't go in there. My cousin Jonathan was with me. He said, and I will know if you've been in there or not. I said, oh my Lord, he has magic to myself. Jonathan said, Doug, are you going to see what's in this barn, in the crib? I said, no. Uncle Valen said not to, and we shouldn't. He said, I'm going, whether you go or not. Oh, Jonathan went in there and started fighting back those shucks until he got to something on the floor in a wooden keg about long as this 
not long as this table, half long as this table, had a spout at the end. He said, oh, we can sample this. And I said, no, no, we. <laughs> he told us not to come in in the first place. Now we're going to bother his stuff, his wine or something. He said, oh, this is just for Holy, for Holy Communion. I said, how do you know? He said, I heard who made it. I said, well, then you know why we shouldn't be in here. He said, not till I get me a sample. He shoved, put some more shucks out of the way, got his little head down there and opened his mouth and opened the little mouth, the little spout and said, drip by drip. He said, every drop he swallowed. I said, this must be some strong stuff. Don't you want a little sample? I said, no. We promise. We we promised him that we would not even come in here. He said, you may have made a promise. <laughs> I didn't say a word. I just said, smile. <laughs> you know how he man. Said, I yeah. am not going to let this opportunity pass me by. And I'm going to tell him I know why he didn't want us to come in here. I said, what you going to tell Uncle Ben? Say, I haven't decided yet. What was the second question that Uncle Balin asked us? Did you all take a tour of the farm? <laughs> I, we said, yes, sir. Was there anything interesting you saw? I said, yes, sir. Jonathan looked like he wanted to just crack up and die. Did you all, you all didn't go in that crib, did you? I said, yes. Before I could say, sir, Jonathan said, uh-uh, because you told us not to. <laughs> <laughs> then he turned to Jonathan and said, Jonathan, did you uh, go into that crib where I told you not to, where the two of you not to go in? He said, who? Duck went. <laughs> <laughs> Duck went. I said, did you go duck in there? I said, yes, sir. Didn't I ask you not to? I said, yes, sir. And you went anyway? I said, yes, sir. And I, I'm sorry that I misbehaved and I didn't obey you. Joe Nathan said, I didn't. I went and it was good. Uncle Valen didn't ask him anything. He just volunteered. So he said, do you see why I ask you not to go in there? There are some things that we try to keep separate from the regular things on the farm because we serve things for the church as well as the home. Hmm. So Nathan said, but you didn't tell me that we're going to be all, you had that wine in there <coughs> for all these occasions. He said, how you know it was wine? I chased him, he said. I said, oh, my gracious. Uncle Valen looked at me. He said, Doug, did you um, sample the, the wine? I said, no, sir. And Joe Nathan looked at me like he said, don't you tell anything. He said, why? I said, I guess it's because, no, I didn't say I guess. I said, because she told, told us not to come in here in the first place. And the second thing is that you didn't want us to put our hands on it, on the that that wooden thing, wooden bowl, I called it. And our hands were not clean and everything. If you're going to use it for Holy Communion, I know you want it to keep, be nice and clean. Joe Nathan said, may have been dirty, but it was the best dirt I ever had. <laughs> I said, this is the one cousin that I don't need to know when I come down here to visit little mama because he'll get you in trouble. <laughs> so Uncle Bailey said, okay, now you know what's in here. I'm still in you say, don't come in here anymore. That's it. But we, and that was firm yes, for, yes, for yes. Uncle Bailey to say that. And his dog Jack was with him. <laughs> well, you know, um, uh, all this talk of fools got me a little, a little uh, desiring the the uh, 
sweet potato pie in there, so I'm going to get some sweet potato pie. Thank you for all this. Would you please? You want me to get you a plate? No, that's all right. I can do it myself. Do you want sweet potato? You want a slither? Do you, do you want a slither? You know, I don't want you to eat alone. It would be not <laughs> southern. <laughs> I would not be southern if I didn't join it with you. Okay, so let's do that. Okay. 